Hello, and welcome to Impact the Borough, a podcast from the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. I'm Brent Christensen, the president and CEO of the Chamber. Each week, we'll highlight what we're doing to start and grow businesses, create quality jobs, and develop our workforce. We'll also check in with our community partners to share inspiring stories and important information from across our community. This podcast is brought to you by TrueLiant Federal Credit Union, a modern, mission-driven financial institution focused on the needs of its members, the businesses it serves, and our community. With five locations in Guilford County, including a dedicated commercial lending office at Friendly Center and a highly rated mobile banking app, TrueLiant makes it their business to help you grow yours. Visit TrueLiant.org for more information. Welcome, everyone. My name is Ainsley Johnston. I'm the event manager here at the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. Before we get started, a quick note. Since we recorded this podcast a couple weeks ago, Governor Roy Cooper has loosened the COVID restrictions for North Carolina. As a result, the ACC announced it will now sell a limited number of tickets to the general public for both the women's and men's tournaments. Be sure to check Ticketmaster.com for availability. Now, on with the show. I am here today with the Greensboro Sports Foundation. And gentlemen, I'm going to let you introduce yourselves and how you fit in at the Sports Foundation. I'm Rob Goodman. I'm the Executive Director of the Greensboro Sports Foundation. Uh, and we uh, started this whole enterprise officially a couple of years ago, and, and we do our best to serve as a local organizing committee for all the big sports events we host in Greensboro. And I'm Mark Bush, and I'm a, a volunteer. I'm, I'm a vice chair on the board of the Sports Foundation. Uh, maybe my claim to fame is I, I go back a long, a long way through the Sports Commission, Tournament Host Committee, and ultimately ended up where we are, as Rob said, a couple of years ago with the Greensboro Sports Foundation. So been at it a long time. I'm glad to just wear a volunteer hat. Rob, as executive director, does all the heavy lifting. He lies. Um, he may be he may be a volunteer, but this is the hardest working uh, human that I've met, especially one who considers himself retired. If you didn't say it, I was going to because <laughs> I feel exactly the same way in every time that I've had to work with Mark. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, address the elephant in the virtual room. We did this, the three of us, nearly exactly a year ago. Uh, I think it was the last podcast Holly informed us that was uh, done in person. We definitely were not socially distanced. We were in a little podcast studio, maybe two feet apart from one another. So while this is, uh, it's still fun to see y'all this way. I'm very glad to see y'all this way, but definitely different. So very representative of of kind of what we're going to talk about today. Well, and Mark uh, Mark Mark coined a phrase, and he didn't really coin the word, but I mean, he started early on in the pandemic last year, calling it surreal, and it, it really is kind of the perfect word for all this. It's bizarre world that we live. It's a puzzle every day, and okay, how are the piece is going to come together today. So, you you improvise and you move on. Absolutely. Yeah, the part I was every, every time you turn around, you had lots of lots of people and said, you know, we had to get it was going to be a new normal. And what I, I, I would rather say, it's a different normal. Um, and so that's that's you know, your, your memory about a year ago. And we were together uh, at the Cultural Arts Center doing this. And I, here we are a year later. because We're going to talk about the same thing. But it's it certainly is. It certainly is a different normal. It is, and as an event manager, I uh, I feel y'all's pain. I have been right there with you with that kind of bobbing and weaving. So I would love to kind of go back, not to trigger anyone, but when we were talking about this uh, last year, we were meeting to talk about all of the tournaments coming up, all of the great things that were happening in 2020, the women's ACC tournament, the men's, all the swimming events, the Wyndham, there was so much coming up. And we got through the women's ACC tournament. Um, and then there came the men's. And I was downtown 
at one of those great events that that y'all helped plan. We were doing the watch party when um, when the announcement came over that not only were there going to be limited fans, but actually the tournament was just being canceled. So take me back there, kind of with everything that was planned, talk about when that happened and after all that hard work y'all had done. Well, I, I, I told somebody um, shortly after that, it was actually, no, someone said this to me and I said, no, this is the that's the perfect way to capture this. Paul Brazo from the ACC said this, and he said, it's like the most unfulfilled, I'm going to not get the quote quite right, it's like the most unfulfilled feeling I've had in my professional career. I mean, the the sweat and oil and funds that went into everything that, I mean, from about September, I mean, we've been working on this for, for more than a year, and the meetings with the ACC and the all the all the time and toil that went into that, and then poof, it's all gone. Um, was just so unbelievably unfulfilling, and I struggled for I don't know a month or a couple of weeks or two, two weeks to two weeks to a month after. What what is this? What is this feeling that I have? Because I couldn't quite figure it out. But I'll just take you back to the morning of a day the, during the ACC women's basketball tournament. We had a meeting between the semifinal games, and it was Scott Johnson from the Coliseum, Commissioner John Swafford, and me, and we are talking about these next weeks. And we left this, and mostly I sat there. They mostly talked. You know, they, they were the varsity players, and the, and the JV kids sat there and listened. But, you know, it, it was, we're going to be okay for the men's tournament. We're really worried about NCAA first and second rounds. We all thought we'll be all right next week. Um, and boy, did it change quickly. The speed with which everything evolved was mind boggling. And uh, on Wednesday night in the second round of the tournament, during the second round, they announced that Thursday, the quarterfinals will be no fan. And uh, next morning, I hadn't left home yet. I saw Commissioner Swafford on the ACC network, Packer and Durham, and he was doing an onset interview. And he said, you know, all systems go, we're, we're playing. And then I went to the Coliseum. He met with the media in the building at 11. All systems go. We're, we're on our way. I have one more call, um, but we're, we're playing. And, and we all know what happened after that one more call. So for the decision, I actually saw on Twitter that it was going to be canceled. And I walked out into the arena. And this is where Mark's surreal word comes in. So I walk out. And the way I walked out, the first group of people I saw, I saw the Clemson cheerleaders. And then the Clemson dance team and the Clemson band over there. And I walked down the other end of the court, opposite Florida State dance team, Florida State cheerleaders, Florida State band, and behind all of them, all these blue seats that were empty. And I just thought, whoa, that's the strangest thing I've ever seen. And then maybe 15 or 20 minutes later, the commissioner came out onto the court with the Florida State team uh, to announce that the tournament was canceled. And I remember I was just kind of numb. I think everybody was, all of us, that were in the arena at the time, everybody had these blank stares on their faces, like, wow, is this really happening? And of course now, almost a year later, yeah, it really happened. <laughs> it still is happening. Um, but we've gotten used to now, we've adapted, we've adjusted, we've overcome, we've gotten used to the empty arenas now and the, we're still playing the games. It's just a very different feeling. And I heard from other people Angel, that were downtown and it was just, wait, what? What do you mean there's, you know, what? On, on Tuesday evening, I was at the tailgate zone because we had multiple tournament town volunteers there um, at at the um, at Piedmont Hall out in front, and we sort of got an inkling, you know, that a change change was afoot, and you know, you knew that the next day's games were going to be with no fans. And Ainsley, I was like you, I came downtown. I got downtown on Wednesday at twelve, at Thursday at twelve noon. And everything was go. We were enjoying it a little bit. And yeah, nothing with what was going on at the Coliseum on the big video board out in front of the Tanger Center was they were they were showing the Big East. I can't remember who was playing. And they stopped their tournament at halftime of that game. So you knew what was going on. And then you got the word. And my surreal moment, just like Rob's, I had business to, to do. I went back to the Coliseum. And walked into that Coliseum on Thursday afternoon, and there's there was not a person in the arena. It was just it was. It, I took a picture. I have it someplace. It was just crazy. So, 
you know, that was then. So. No, it, it was amazing. So I made a last minute decision to go to the first night of the tournament. And it was sort of a, um, my younger brother was coming into town. He decided to come. Both of my teams were not very good. They lost in the first round. So, you know, it worked out better, worse for me. But I intentionally got my souvenir soda. So I have a 2020 ACC uh, men's basketball <laughs> tournament souvenir because you sort of had this impending feeling. I mean, we were all still packed in there, but you, you glanced a little side-eyed, you know, because you, you had sort of heard what might be coming. Um, so I just remember being downtown and one of the big things was um, there were people who had come into town to see the games and sure. when they could no longer attend, they came downtown, they were going to make the best of it. We were having a great community party. And when, um, when all that happened, you started to think about the restaurants, like our friends at Stamey's just right across the street from the Coliseum, all of those amazing parties y'all had had on deck, you know, the tailgating, Casey and the Sunshine Band. The, the concerts. You had done a great, great job of getting everything together. Um, so, I mean, what sort of effect do you feel like it, it had on the community? It kind of, you know, we, we know our own personal, uh, <laughs> our own personal feelings and traumas, but what was it like on the community as a whole? Because y'all really keep track of those sorts of stats and figures. Well, I think, you know, we, we're, we're, we're tied in pretty, we're tied in pretty closely with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Merchants Association, obviously the Chamber. And y'all, we, we all know what the, the impact on the businesses was from the very beginning, you know, and they didn't, they didn't have the revenues. I mean, this was going to be a big, big, quarter and not just ACC events but all the other events and then the, the Tanger Center opening and none of that happening happened so just the restaurants alone downtown across the community what an impact my feeling is they they weathered it pretty well but you know we're all we're, we still see the we'll still still see the impacts we're, we're seeing it every day so we just got to work that much harder to try to get back to some level so well what I I don't want to I don't want to dwell on all that <laughs> we all got through all of that why are we bringing it back up shame on uh, me so my question is kind of what's next you know um what I'd love to hear about is what is happening in 2021 can we go if we can't how do we uh, support those tournaments, those games, the ACC, those restaurants that would have normally had tons of people there. Talk to us about what we can look forward to. Well, I, I can start with with just the events that are actually kicking off uh, in the middle of February. I mean, we start with the ACC, much the, much the, much the same as last year. We start with the ACC Women's uh, Swimming and Diving Championships. Then we go to the ACC Men's Swimming Championships. Then the ACC Women's Tournament the ACC men's basketball tournament. And then after that, immediately after that, we have the uh, NCAA Division I Women's Swimming and Diving National Championships. That was scheduled years ago. We've known that was coming. But uh, thank you to the pandemic. We The next week, we have the uh, NCAA Division I Men's Swimming and Diving Championships. That was previously scheduled for uh, Iowa. But the University of Iowa um, ended their swimming program, so the NCAA needed a, pro, uh, a location for that. So we're very fortunate they brought it here. So great to have all those events here. The swimming events are going to be no fans, no parents. Um, in fact, we've had, as we're signing up volunteers uh, for these events, and you can register to volunteer at greensboro.sf.com backslash volunteer, a little shameless plug there. Um, we had parents contacting us directly and asking if they could come volunteer. And the, the NCAA doesn't allow parents to volunteer where their kids are, are competing. But that's how, I mean, parents want to get in and see their kids compete and they can't. So that's, that's really unfortunate. Um, the basketball tournaments, the rules are evolving. Uh, current rules are two, uh, like potentially two tickets per member of the, the uh, traveling party. So the team 
and maybe now look not even sure if it's just the team or everybody in the traveling party and then 25 fans on addition in addition to that uh, our COVID numbers are trending in the right direction so hopefully that gets loosened a little bit before the tournaments but we don't know the answer to that yet and then following the NCAA men's Division One Men's Swimming and Diving Championships, the last the week that is partially March and partially April, uh, we were supposed to have had the YMCA Short Course Nationals. That event was canceled, but uh, the YMCA's and the Triad and the Triangle worked together to come up with a substitute event. So we do have a YMCA swimming event that week. That's cool that they're all coming, but um, great events, unfortunately, you can't really get to in to see them. So how do you support them? You watch them on the ACC Network and ESPN, and uh, for the ACC Women's Basketball Tournament, some of the games are on uh, Fox Sports Regional Networks. So you watch the, you watch the games, and as, as COVID regulations allow, you go to restaurants and bars and you support our local businesses. And, and anytime you can do takeout from a restaurant or actually go to a restaurant, you're helping these, these small local-owned businesses because they are struggling and striving to make it to the end of this, and whether it's May or whatever. And Piedmont Triad Partnership is working on a program called Hashtag Triad Together. So uh, when you go to these events, take a picture, post it on social media and use the hashtag Try It Together and you can get in and win, win some prizes. But uh, we've got to support these local businesses. So these events are a great opportunity to go do that. I'm glad you mentioned um, that that hashtag because I know that the, the chamber has been involved in using it as well. Uh, we so appreciate the Piedmont Triad Partnership kind of leading the charge there. You know, I know for our annual meeting this year, part of attending the meeting was also getting a local gift card to one of our Greensboro restaurants uh, and, and asking people to do that, to use that hashtag. So sounds like social media will be a, a big thing because I know that ACC wants to see that, that we care here in Greensboro. And we're also working with, we're working again, there, there is, you know, the, the team, the, the swimming teams, the basketball teams, they're coming in. Um, we have, we do have the ability to provide some local hosts. <laughs> There'll be virtual local hosts, but they're in a position to, to recommend the local caterers and local restaurants that are willing to do the takeout for the teams and to tr try to try to help that happen and to stimulate that interest and that activity. Um, downtown restaurants, we know are very active in that regard um, and all our restaurant community is. So um, there is some ability to, to, to stimulate with with the visitors coming in it's just the fans aren't going to the fans aren't going to be here I think from the overall standpoint though we it is an opportunity for us once again as tournament town to showcase what we can do um, you know there's some there's some new players in town that we want to impress um, we are going to do some things um, in the community. So you'll see some things. So you'll know these events are going on. So again, the greater community can start to feel a little bit better about itself. Um, so we're, we're just, we're, we're, we're pushing forward on that. And I, I'll just follow up from that, Ainsley, is, is we are the Greensboro Sports Foundation creates a, a local restaurant guide. Um, years ago, that restaurant guide included every chain restaurant that you could come up with. We took chains out for the most part and just put local businesses in there, locally owned restaurants that you can't get in Charlotte, you can't get in Brooklyn, you can't get in Washington, D.C. So we're revising that and we're adding to that this year to pick up on what Mark was talking about, a list of restaurants that are, are set up to cater. So they can bring 50 boxed meals to a hotel um, for a team. They can, uh, possibilities in Greensboro, for example, they will deliver They'll deliver boxed meals to the outside of the Coliseum for the bus going to the airport so they can eat it on the bus before they get on the plane. Uh, so we work with Downtown Greensboro Incorporated to, to get a list of downtown restaurants that they've been working with that are providing boxed meals for the different programs or supporting the businesses that they've been doing. And so we're putting all that together. And the ACC Women's Tournament is actually asking its, its teams at least one time while they're here do a meal that is catered from a local restaurant into the hotel. They have to be boxed meals. You can't, they're not going to have a restaurant come in and set up a buffet. But they're going to be eating the hotel food most of the time, but at least once while they're here, do it that way to support these local businesses. That's, so that's awesome. Yeah. And you know, our, our, our local hotels are local businesses as well. They are uh, providing a lot of great local jobs. So 
you know, we appreciate what they're doing too. Mark, I want to go back to something that you said because you were talking about how we can um, impress people even though we can't attend these events, that there were some new players in town. I know last time we spoke, we spoke about a lot of new athletic directors at a lot of these ACC schools. But um, if people don't know, our current ACC commissioner, John Swafford, is retiring at the end of June. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, Rob, what does that mean for Greensboro, what does that mean for the ACC? Do we know who's taking over? Kind of talk to us about that. Well, we, we definitely know who's taking over. First, we can't thank John Swafford enough for his commitment to the member institutions and the, the city of Greensboro. <clears throat> Excuse me, he, he's just been phenomenal for our city and certainly wish him, very glad that he and Nora are staying in town and uh, certainly wish them great things in the retirement stage uh, phase of their lives. Uh, our new commissioner is Jim Phillips. Uh, he was the director of athletics at Northwestern University. He started his actual first day of work, I believe was February 1st. So he and John are, are both kind of working now. Jim's the commissioner, but John is advising with the transition in any way, any way uh, requested or needed. Um, Jim is going to be here for the men's and women's tournaments in March, so that'll be our first opportunity to, to actually meet him, quote unquote, face to face. It'll be mask to mask, but you know, at least we'll be able to to talk to him, and and he'll be able. That'll be his first opportunity to see tournament town in action, and how we host events. And it's just going to be part of what we generally do because we aren't going to have a ton of volunteers around because there's not a whole lot for them to do this year with the basketball tournaments. Lots of volunteers will be working the swimming event, but. Uh, that's, I think, the, the primary new player that, uh, that, that Mark was talking about. We do have a couple of new directors of athletics and look forward to seeing them when they're here as well. Um, but it's just every time someone asked me a question a year ago, um, do you feel like you have to do, do, does Greensboro have to prove itself to continue hosting these tournaments? And, and I said, I think any event has to prove itself every time it hosts an event because you always want to be at that level of excellence that is respected and makes people say, wow, they really are buttoned up. I want to bring this event back. And that's always our goal. So we, we feel like we're, you know, we've got to prove ourselves every day, every time we host these great events. And that's what we want to show our new dignitaries. Well, I remember last okay, year, y'all telling us about the, um, the figure skating and how, how the U S figure skating championships were, adjusting their model so they they could be a bit more nimble could go to smaller arenas but that they trusted Greensboro to host the first version of that because they knew that we would take care of them so um I think that is a huge feather in our cap no question and just that uh, I think it, the U.S. It, figure skating championships have been in Greensboro North Carolina three times is, is a little bit mind-boggling you know it's, it's it's a northern sport right now so not so much anymore. And, and as I know, I said last year, and I'll shut up, Mark, and let you say what I interrupted you on. But uh, we our Greensboro Coliseum Complex is the only venue that that event visits where everything happens at one location. The other places, the athletes are bused to one place to warm up, and they get on a bus, and then they have to go to the performance arena. We put ice in the special event center. They warm up there. They walk across, and they're right on the performance ice. So that's a, something we can do that nobody else can. And, and quite the, as you said, feather in our cap. I think the point is, is that as the Coliseum complex and our tournament town reputation, we, the, the, again, it's going to be different, but we have a chance to sort of showcase in different norms. There we are again, what it's like. And so we want, we want to show the new commissioner. We want to show the athletic directors. Um, you know, they showed, they showed a lot of faith in Greensboro in terms of awarding the men's tournament. It's supposed to be in DC, but because of COVID-19, they said, we've got, a, we've got the ability to control it more. If we play the 21 tournament in Greensboro. So they're doing that. Um, and it gives us a chance to, to showcase the, what, what Matt Brown and Scott Johnson and the Coliseum staff do uh, internally is just, it's just amazing. The improvements that they've made in, in, in a year in terms of locker room enhancements, a uh, new North VIP entrance, that type of thing, parking improvements. Um, since, since everything shut down, uh, people would be amazed. 
you know, on a broader level though, and we also have, we do have the men's tournament and the women's tournaments through then, but the men's tournament returns in 2023. Um, so we have a chance to really, you know, make a statement and, and host it two years out of the next three. Um, do they go to Brooklyn next year, Rob? Is that correct? Yes. I think they go to Brooklyn in 22. So uh, it's an opportunity for us. And Rob hits it, hit it on the head. We, we don't take it for granted. Um, these events, these signature events are so important and we approach everyone. Um, like we, we've got to do it. We've got to do it better than we did it before. So. Well, and I know everyone will be so glad to hear about the tournament this year and the 2023, because I know that was one of the big questions uh, that everyone was asking, hey, when can we get it back? Because it is a process. They do kind of bid it out and, and we know where it's going to be several years in advance. So I know everyone is so excited about that. And it kind of leads me to kind of one of my last questions. Um, talk to us about moving forward. So, you know, do we do we know much about our, our friends at the Wyndham at the end of this year? What what should we expect in the coming years? Um, you know, what's what's on the horizon once we're all, uh, you know, vaccined up and and uh, ready to to get into a stadium again? Yeah. What what's uh, what is what what is our new our updated normal going to be? And and I, I think I will only tell I. I just, uh, I'll start with the Wyndham. Uh, the Wyndham Championship uh, was fan-free uh, last August, and it was, again, Mark's word, surreal. Um, we were just thankful to be able to have the tournament, and I remember talking to tournament director Mark Brazel right after it, um, and, and we both were like, yeah, that was, okay, we got that done. Let's never do it like this again. I mean, it was just, it just, it was it was getting it done, but it wasn't. You couldn't share it with the community. I mean, this is this event has been in Greensboro, North Carolina, since 1938, and this is the first time there's been nobody there to see it. So, uh, really, just just craziness. But uh, so we determined even this year on what the Wyndham looks like in 2021. Um, I think safe bet that it will be someplace between uh, what we did last year and our you know as many people as we want scenario. Um, if I had to guess, I would think our sponsors will, will certainly be able to be there and hopefully, you know, a, a percentage of our fans just depends on what's going on with COVID. Um, on the other event side, the non-golf event side, Mark mentioned the 2023, we have the women's tournament, we have the ACC men's tournament, and we have the NCAA first and second round. So it's, uh, it's Richard Beard's uh, tournament town trifecta that he likes to say. So that will put us in the same scenario we had one year ago and hopefully we're able to finish it um, that time in 2023 but before we get there in 2022 uh, we have the AAU Junior Olympics coming back uh, to Greensboro that was here in 2020 um, uh, excuse me 2019 and uh, scheduled for 2024 uh, the venue that was supposed to have it in 2022 was unable to do it so they you know they were so happy with what Greensboro did they brought it back in 22 and that's that is a tremendous honor to you know that wow you guys crushed it can you do it again before 24 so and it's a mega great. event as far as hotel and restaurant impact mega so that was i believe 18,000 athletes uh, most of them track and field with our partners over at North Carolina A&T so uh, really a phenomenal event and a huge hotel occupancy Tax generating event for uh, for our city. So that's those are the big things that I know of at the moment in 22 and 23. And hey, we're we're looking forward to it. We've we've adjusted. We've all learned so much. I mean, does this pandemic stink? Absolutely. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes wearing a mask. Nobody likes doing these podcasts virtually or whatever. But we've all learned a lot, and there are efficiencies that we've realized in just about every area of our society that will remain and that's going to be good in the end we'll in the long term we'll be better off for having gone through this well, and don't and don't forget you know we, we we talk about the acc aau um nca events there's a whole underneath that there, there's a whole litany of events some of them are already coming back i know i i, I heard comments uh, last week the Coliseum that there's some AAU basketball youth national championships that are already committed. 
Um, the Convention and Visitors Bureau um, has a sales team that's out there constantly selling our sports venues. Um, so those events are those events are going to come back. It's going to take some time, but they're gonna they're gonna compete, and the people's kids are gonna play, um, and they're gonna look for places that where they can feel safe and and Greensboro and Tournament Town is definitely on that list. And I, I would echo that. That is what I think I've taken away the most from what y'all have said today is without a doubt, it sounds like the people who run these tournaments trust the city of Greensboro and all of our amazing facilities to do things safely and correctly. And so when there is any question, they have they have come back to us. So that just shows that, you know, that preparation and, and the hospitality that we show really gives us a great opportunity uh, when, when it arises, that they think of us first. So that is so super awesome. I really appreciate y'all being here today, um, albeit us not, you know, snuggled up in our podcast studio together. But I would just say, you know, one more time, Please remind people once uh, for those events like the swimming where we can have some volunteers. And then once we are back all together, just remind people kind of how they can find y'all, how they can figure out what you're doing and how they can sign up to, to be a volunteer. Well, the best way for that, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, as you were saying that, I really wanted to mention one of the reasons that so many of these events do come back and we're thankful for that is, is our volunteer. They are the best. They are so loyal. They are so hospitable um, and really a, a to Z. I mean, top to bottom, however you want to say it, they're, they're amazing. And we have a database of about a thousand and it's more than a thousand now. And that counts the Greensboro Sports Council and our Greensboro Sports Foundation volunteers. So we cannot literally cannot do these events without them. So we are so appreciative of the commitment that they all have. Um, to making these tournament town events uh, the best they can be. Uh, it really, the best place for all that information is our website, Greensboro SF, as in Sports Foundation, greensboro-sf.com. And for information on volunteering or to join the database, you just click on volunteer and fill out a quick form. There. You'll get an email back immediately saying that uh, we've received your registration and then you should start getting other emails. So greensboro-sf.com backslash of volunteers to sign up. And it sounds like in the meantime, we should be uh, watching our TVs, following along, getting our takeout from local restaurants, using our hashtag triad together, uh, shouting out anytime we see Greensboro on, on the TV, or we see the Goodyear blimp out our front door, uh, even if we can't physically be out over at Sedgefield. So um, sounds like a lot of great stuff and we will hopefully all be together very very soon so much thank you all. thank you Ainsley. Ainsley thank you so much for doing this again thank you in the chamber this podcast is brought to you by Truliant Federal Credit Union a modern mission-driven financial institution focused on the needs of its members the businesses it serves and our community with five locations in Guilford County including a dedicated commercial lending office at Friendly Center and a highly rated mobile banking app, Truliant makes it their business to help you grow yours. Visit truliant.org for more information. You can find all of our episodes on YouTube thanks to our video sponsor, North State. Make sure to subscribe so you'll get new episodes delivered to your device each week. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at GSO Chamber. See you next time.